Volkswagen is sending us an Atlas SUV to try out. And it's a big one with lots of room in there. I've driven one before. Let's look at the price sheet and see how much this baby's going to cost us. This is the SC model with technology package. A quick scrolling down to show you what you're getting. Here's a starting price. No charge, no charge, no charge for. They're not going to charge us for paint. Everybody else is nowadays. A speed automatic transmission. I wasn't aware they offered anything else. There's a total tab of shipping. Some of these can go as high as 55 grand, so I guess we're getting off cheap here. But where is it made? Let's take a look. Chattanooga, Tennessee. By American. Here's the clean fuel economy. We'll talk about the engine once we get out to see the vehicle. And here it is in person, in the flesh. Doesn't look like the red one we saw on the screen. This is a gray color. We have to do this in the shade because it's like 115 degrees out today and very windy. I think the styling on this vehicle is very nice looking. It's also very wide, which comes in handy when you get inside and have all that room. We'll show you later. Here's our rear view. Again, pretty decent looking. Shipped it all the way from Michigan just for us. Well, the first things we do, we get a vehicle to check and see what brand of tires they're giving us because a lot of manufacturers are putting cheap Chinese stuff on to save money. These are Nexons. I'm not saying they're bad tires. This wouldn't be my first choice. These are 20 inch wheels. You get 21 inches on the deluxe models, which certainly won't help the ride quality. I prefer the 20 inches myself. Next thing we do is check and see if there's a spare tire. Nope, but there is a hole for one. And they do give you a jack. So apparently they're standard on the deluxe models, not the economy ones like this. Of course the dealer can put one in here for you if you buy the vehicle, so it's no big deal. Obviously a space saver, which is better than nothing. Beats walking. In the meantime, you can use this for more storage if you've got something to hide. I call your gold and cash. Yeah, thank you for putting that on my video, truck driver. This is why I have my tire repair kit here. This vehicle has lots of room. I couldn't get these that cubic feet specs for some reason, but trust me, it's wide and big. Second row seating, look at all that leg room. A very comfortable place to be. If you fold the second row down, you got even more space. Another thing we do when we get a vehicle is take the headlights out in the dark and say they perform and do a night drive. That's a separate video we posted on YouTube. I'll we'll link for that at the end of this video. So you're getting two videos for the price of one free. Last year you had two engine choices. The base engine was a turbo four, putting out 235 horsepower, rate 21 to 25 mpg. Optional was a 276 horsepower V6, rate 18 to 24 mpg. They're both gone now, replaced with this. The only choice. It's a two liter turbo. Rated 269 horsepower, which is about as much as the V6 put out. Fuel economies claim to be both in either of the previous engines at 20 to 27 mpg. Or I'll take this out in the real world to see if that's true. This is hooked to an 8 speed automatic transmission, and for an extra 1900 bucks, you can get all wheel drive. This is front wheel drive. We should get better fuel economy. Got a trailer hitch here, good for towing 5,000 pounds. On the previous four cylinder, it was only 2,000 pounds, so we went up a notch. You might have noticed the dual exhaust. It's fake. There's nothing in there. Looks only. <laughs> Go figure. 
I'm very impressed with the quality of materials and workmanship on this vehicle. Very nice for the price class. I don't like this reflective material here that reflects the sun's rays in your face at certain times of the day. Why do manufacturers do this? It seems they all do. In any case, here's the shifter, parking button. Glove box has lots of room. A 12 inch info screen is now standard across the line. Okay, hard switches are just about gone. Just about everything is done on the info screen here. A lot of people don't like this. I don't. You do have some shortcut buttons down here for the climate, menu, and drive mode. Eco Comfort Sport and. <laughs> come back, come back. I can read that. All right. You get four drive modes. And here's the rear view camera, very high quality. I have it in reverse right now. In all fairness, I've used this info screen and it's pretty simple. Didn't take too long to get used to it. Here's your volume control for the radio, temperature control, override. It's really not that bad a system. I only had one gripe. You won't climb it, you press the button down here, get your climate controls. Okay, I can live with that. But what happened was, I was driving the other day, I pressed something here, I don't know what, lost all my air conditioning, which is not something you want when it's 117 degrees outside, which means we're getting 117 degrees in the cabin real quick. I'm getting ready to do a 120 mile trip. Don't need this. Finally got the screen to come back up, and the whole thing was frozen. Could not get the thing to work, had to turn the vehicle off, bring it back up. Now everything's fine, but still, that's why I like simple knobs, but in any case, it's working now. It does blow cold air, so I'm not going to complain. Got a very nice gauge cluster. Yes, I'm aware of the low tire pressure warning lights on. It's a false alarm. Right now we're running 33 pounds and it wants 36. Once the tires warm up, it should go out. We'll put in more air later. All right, show and tell is over. Let's do some driving. And I've driven the Atlas before, and like then and now, very, very comfortable to drive. Smooth ride. Very comfortable for long trips. It's like sitting on a living room couch and just going. Steering is quick and responsive. Not much feel and feedback, but quick and responsive is more important for most drivers, apparently, nowadays. And light. If you live where the roads are slick, the all-wheel drive system might be worth the money, but otherwise I'd stick with front-wheel drive. Causes less drag on the engine, better fuel economy. And here in the desert, <laughs> you really don't need all-wheel drive, unless you're driving in sand. Since this Turbo 4 is pretty, well, pretty much the same horsepower as the previous V6, in fact, more torque, it does have a lot of pickup. And nice brakes. Ooh, my toolbox in the back just flipped over. Boo hoo. The exhaust sound on this is kind of weird, like a UPS truck, but you'll get used to it. This is a very nice city commuter, great for hauling lots of gear, but keep in mind it's big, so it doesn't squeeze in parking spaces quite as well as the compact ones, obviously. But again, if you're hauling lots of stuff, you won't be complaining. The only question is, what is the real world fuel economy? We're going to take this out and do some highway driving. And get those numbers for you, so let's do it. Here's a highway trip we took. One hour, 56 miles, 52 miles per hour, 20.8 mpg. 20.8? Eh, well, that's not very impressive. If we get a chance, we'll try another highway trip. See if we can do better. It is kind of hot out. 112 degrees. Well, let's take another trip. Let's see what the MPG number will be. By the way, this is a very nice highway cruiser. Very big, very comfortable. Lots and lots of room in here for all your stuff. 
These seats are pretty comfortable for long trips too. About 22.0 in our 61 mile second trip. Slight improvement. The last highway fuel economy trips we took didn't turn out too well. Had a bunch of low numbers. The wind's pretty low tonight. We'll take the third one. Let's see if we can get a better figure. Let's look at the numbers. 27.7 MPG at 73 miles per hour, 60 miles. Far, far better. In fact, I think 27 MPG is what they claim on the window sticker for highway driving. So we finally made the target. Terrific. So what's my take on this Volkswagen Atlas SUV after a week of driving? After right hip a lot of miles, I can definitely say these are very, very comfortable seats. About as good as anything else I've had in upgraded German cars from Mercedes, Audi, or BMWs of late. They didn't skimp on this. Great for long trips. I like that clock, by the way. You can see it with all the reflections we get. You know, when I first got the vehicle and saw it had all this push button stuff on the info screen you have to use to do functions, I wasn't very happy. I don't like these things as a rule, but after a couple of days, you know, this is actually a very easy system to use. Very simple. By the end of the week, no problems at all. If only all the other touchscreen systems could be as simple as this, we might not hate them so much. I can live with this. Volkswagen did a good job. Overall, if you're looking for an SUV, you need lots and lots of room. You get one of these for around 40 grand. I'd say it'd be a pretty good deal. Now it's time for a headlight test and night drive. Here's the link coming up. Click and watch. You're already here. Why not?